Something very scary happened to me yesterday. Probably the closest I've come in a long time, if ever, to a near-death experience. Had things gone a little differently, um, uh, I might not be here right now. So <laughs> I've been trying to get to Ghana for a while. It's a small country in West Africa. It's about a 10 hour nonstop flight from New York City. Originally, I was planning to go a few weeks ago. I booked the ticket. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that a visa was required for US citizens traveling to Ghana. So I had to reschedule. So I, I canceled the flight, I had to rebook. I show up to the airport and uh, you know we're sitting there, it's a midnight flight, ready to fly from New York to Accra, Ghana. And they announce a flight delay. Originally it's it's an hour delay. And then the, the, the Delta spokesperson gets on and tells us that the captain of the plane has become grievously ill at the last minute and we have to reschedule the flight to tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. So I'm on this midnight flight and now because the captain is sick, they have to get a new captain and then fly a totally different plane tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Okay, so I'm packed up there at midnight, ready to go to Accra with all my stuff. I go home, I barely get any sleep, super anxious. Show up tomorrow to the airport at 3.30 p.m. We get on the plane, it's a new captain, new plane. And so it's 3.30 p.m., we're ready to travel to Accra. We board the plane successfully, and, and this was yesterday, 3.30 p.m. And unfortunately, uh, yesterday there were thunderstorms, um, lightning in the area, so the plane can't take off. So we're sitting on the tarmac for an hour. We can't take off because there's lightning, thunder. So I'm, I'm sitting on the tarmac, like, emailing my contacts in Ghana, being like, hey, we're gonna be late. We start moving and we finally take off. Okay, so now we're in the air. There's a little bit of turbulence, but it's okay. I'm just relieved to, to finally be traveling to Ghana. There's a lot of stuff, by the way, involved in traveling to this country. You need to get a visa. You have to get a yellow fever vaccination. Um, you have to get a temperature check when you're getting on the plane. So there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of moving pieces. And keep in mind, each time these planes are delayed or rescheduled, I'm having to cancel my hotels. I'm having to move everything around. It's a couple hours into the flight, uh, maybe two or three hours, close to midway over the Atlantic Ocean. I'm sitting in the mid row and I see the captain come down the aisle and start looking out the window at the wing of the plane. Okay, so he's standing there. He's looking out the window at the wing of the plane. He's opening people's window sliders on the plane up to look out at the window. This is the captain, the guy who's flying the plane. He's like reaching over people's seats to open the window and he's traveling to like multiple people's seats. So he's like opening up one person's window and then he's going to the next seat. He's trying to get a, like the best angle to look at the wing at. And this is causing a bit of a stir on the plane. I remember saying to the guy sitting next to me, like, this doesn't look good. Think about like the captain of your plane, and I've never seen this before. He's coming into the passenger seats to look out the passenger windows at the wing of the plane. So I'm thinking, what's going on right now? But I mean, like, what are you gonna do as a passenger? I was wondering like if there was some issue with the wing or like something he was doing, he wasn't able to like, maneuver the wing successfully. It's kind of a scary sight to see the captain of the plane trying to get a physical look at the wing of the plane. And so I was seeing a bunch of whispering and rumors going on, but nothing officially from the flight deck until maybe like a half an hour, an hour later, when the captain comes on and he says, um, <clears throat> I'm very sorry, but we have a fuel issue and we're midway over the Atlantic at this point. And he says, we are gonna need to return to New York. And he says, the, the plane is momentarily going to make a right turn and we're going back. Um, and when we get back, there's gonna be ground crews to check the configuration of the plane and make sure everything's okay. And the plane just erupts, as you can imagine. Like, holy shit, at this point, at this point, this isn't like a, you know, like, yes, my plane's been delayed a few times, can't get to Ghana now, but that's not what I'm thinking in the moment. 
what I'm thinking in the moment is there's a fuel issue on this plane and we're thousands of miles out over the Atlantic Ocean like hours from any land <laughs> like what this is not good so when I remember looking at the flight tracker right and our plane like I've never seen anything like this we, we're flying out of the middle of the Atlantic we just turn around mid-flight and we're going straight back to JFK now I go over and talk to one of the flight attendants um, she says it's some kind of fuel leak like we have two hours to get back to New York you don't know what's gonna happen I hope everything's okay with this flight um, it'd be really great to be able to hold my baby again if this is my last video uh, you know they need to somehow recover this phone and, and, uh, I really hope I'm overreacting here I'm sure I am but uh, you know I I love you guys, I love my family, and I'm with my friends, so you guys really mean everything to me, and it's it's only in situations like this, I think, that you really realize uh, what's, what's really important to you, and um, what really matters in life, you know? I just want to hold my baby, man. You know, at this point, like, the Ghana trip isn't even in my mind anymore. It's just like, can we get back to New York successfully? And fortunately, at this point, the Wi-Fi on the plane is working just for messages. But I start texting my wife, and here's what I said. I said, Babe, that means, like, Connie in Chinese. <clears throat> um, and <laughs> can you imagine getting these texts as the wife of somebody? <laughs> Currently 40,000 feet up over the Atlantic Ocean. I said, please don't be worried. We are over the Atlantic right now and had to turn around. The plane is coming back to JFK now. That's New York Airport. Apparently there is some sort of fuel issue. It will be safe. But if anything happens, I love you so much and let baby Elon know how much I love him always. And my parents, I love them so much. <clears throat> Brothers too. And I head to the turn Um And then my wife says, OMG, OMG, what are you talking about? I love you so much. What's the, what's the last thing you say to someone? in a situation like that. You know, what's what's like, what's like, you know, like, God forbid, if this is gonna be your last words um, to somebody, what do you say, right? There's a, there's a priest sitting in the aisle right across from me <laughs> and a nun, and I'm just thinking like, there was ever a time <laughs> when we needed some, um, some extraterrestrial help. <laughs> That would be now. <laughs> and it was funny because <laughs> sitting on the aisle on the other side of me, there's a Muslim woman and she's got a copy of the Quran or, or you know, some other Arabic prayer book and you know, she's reading from it. And now as we're flying back to New York, right, you still got the thunderstorms <laughs> and the lightning. So we're flying through all that. Uh, you know, and the plane is bumping around and I'm just like, oh my God. And we still don't know like what the issue is. Like any of these minor shocks of turbulence, it could be normal turbulence or it could be your last moment on Earth. <laughs> as we start getting into like US airspace, as the plane is shuddering with turbulence or some unknown fuel issue, we start like getting emails. Um, <laughs> and we start getting these Delta emails being like, like you got, here's your complimentary meal voucher. We're sorry there was an inconvenience on your flight. You know, and we're seeing the, the city night lights and I finally see New York and I'm like, man, we're this close? Uh, the captain comes over the speakers and said, hey, this is going to be a normal landing. <laughs> He's re reassuring us that we're going to be landing normally. So that that honestly doesn't really make me feel so great. <laughs> like, we're like, okay, don't worry, guys. This is going to be a normal landing, right? As opposed to finally 10 p.m., 11 p.m., the plane touches down um, on land and, and we're, we're all safe. I remember just the feeling of, like, relief. And after we land... Like, it was 
for the most part like a normal landing but when we finally reach the gate there's like fire trucks and ambulances surrounding the plane um which uh which gives you an idea of like the potential severity of the situation I and mean, fortunately it was caught early enough where it wasn't an issue but it could have been something much worse as we were leaving the plane the captain recognized me i got to get into the cockpit and actually ask him like what what happened how many languages did you speak you did a great job thank you well what actually what actually happened like there was a so we actually had a fuel imbalance so yeah. this is the right main fuel tank and this is the left main fuel tank yeah and there's a huge disparity and we were not able to automatically or manually balance the fuel wow. so we could not continue the flight Dude, can i get a picture yeah of course yeah yeah so a little bit after that the captain was kind of like explaining what what could have happened uh, on the plane. It sounds like the fuel imbalance is a really, really severe situation. Like, you know, fortunately we were able to get back without an issue, but it's a good thing he caught it as quickly as he did. Um, because what he was saying was that if that fuel imbalance, um, like I guess there's two different like sides of the plane, just, I guess there's two different fuel tanks. And if one of them has more fuel than the other for whatever reason, I guess it was some kind of mechanical error, one of the engines can flame out on the plane. Uh, and that would have been a really bad situation. Um, but he caught it, um, you know, early enough to save all our lives, basically. So that's fucking crazy, man. Um, shit, like, you know, we could have all just died right there. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, it's just... A, like, things like this, like, you just realize, like, how, uh, you know, how crazy shit can, shit can get, um, yeah, man, I don't know, but it sort of teaches you to, like, value the important stuff in life, I guess. This captain really saved all our lives, um, and I'm super grateful for that. If this story has a motto... Um, <clears throat> give your loved ones a hug because you never know if today might be your last. It's just really clarifying when you're in a situation like that and you don't know what's going to happen. You really realize what's, what's important in life. All the bullshit and everything, you know, just kind of, just kind of goes away and you just realize like, what really matters, so.